So guys, you've got this in Cog Campus. This is just an example of me taking a stock schedule from a client's information system and now trying to do some manipulation in order for me to recalculate cost, select samples, look for duplicate or missing numbers, zero or negatives using CATS. Okay, so if you look at their calculation to get the random amount, they've taken the quantity times by the cost to give the random amount. I've now created a column where I can use CATS now to recalculate. So I say, take the quantity times by the cost and give me the random amount. I didn't have to use any calculation there. The cats did it for me. And now I can go in, do it for the rest of the stock items. And there's the amounts. Formulas were able to quickly give it to me. I then want to get the total, so the casting of this listing. So I can go and put in a formula to give me the total of my new calculations of the individual items. And then I can compare my cost to their random amount to see if they have got accurate recalculations and totals in their schedule. Okay, now I can go and agree their amount to what's in the financial statements, provided I've got those financial statements in soft copy. Next, I want to select a sample with a criteria. So an example of my criteria, I want stock items that exceed 200 Rand. So I can now go and select my population which is the entire stock listing, I can then sort into RAND value and I'll go from largest to smallest so that I can get the biggest items and then I can see everything that exceeds 200 RAND. So this, guys, is a stock listing of 12. It's easy enough for me to be able to look at it and find it, find items in excess of 200. But what happens if it was a stock listing of 2 million items? Then I need to have an ability to be able to pick up items that exceed an amount quickly without physically doing it. Next, duplicates or missing numbers. I select my population, I go to stock code. I sort it once again, and I can now go and look. Are they in numerical order? Are there any missing or duplicate stock codes easy enough for me to identify simply by sorting and using a technique available? Then, looking for zero or negatives. I don't expect their stock schedule to have zero or negatives. I select my population, I go and sort RAND value. Now I'm going to go smallest to largest, and there you can see the smallest is 11,000. There's no zeros or negatives here. So this is just me showing you practically using Excel. The computer software that we have is way more advanced than simple Excel. So those techniques we've just looked at that cats can do, they can do it at a much higher level. They will actually pull out the duplicates or the missing numbers. Or they'll actually pull out the samples without me here doing a sorting technique. This is just to show you very quickly with something you should be familiar with in the form of Excel. Okay, so now guys, I want you to open the list of procedures we had for each assertion, we're going to now work through those and update those procedures to use CATS. Alright, so our list of procedures for each assertion, I'm just going to look at each of these and see how I can adapt them, if possible, to use CATS. Guys, it's very simple, so make sure you do include it like this in a question. 
For completeness, you're selecting a sample from source documents, you're tracing to the journal. If it's hard copy source documents, you can't use CATS because they're outside the system. If they're in the system, you can use CATS. But let's assume they're doing manual at that point, in which case you can't. However, sequence testing of source document numbers to identify missing, provided they are internal source documents, I can. So how do I update my procedure? I literally say, using CATS. Perform sequence testing of the source document or employee numbers to identify missing. Okay, I just change it slightly and I let them know that it's the CATS that are going to do the sequence testing. For occurrence, I'm selecting a sample of transactions from the journal. So now the journal would be in the system. So once again, using CATS, select a sample of transactions and then I will physically trace it to the source document. It's okay that the sentence continues as is, it just needs to state that initially I will use CATS to select the sample. Inspecting a source document is authorized, you cannot use CATS, that is what a human function will do, so I will leave it. Inspecting that it's in the name of the entity, once again, a human function, I cannot do that. However, guys, when I am testing occurrence, I still need to do those procedures. So once I've selected my sample using CATS and I've got the source documents, I will still add these procedures down. I just won't amend them to include a CATS element. Okay, sequence testing for duplicates. Again, because they will have the document number in the system, I can perform sequence testing. Because remember, it's not the source document itself that I'm doing the sequence testing. It's in the journal they would have put down the source document number for recording that transaction. In the employee listing, they will have an employee number and bank account numbers. Okay, so it's, it's just the number that's in the system that I'm doing my sequence testing of. Accuracy, selecting a sample from the journal, so yes, using CATS, select a sample and then I will trace it to the source documents. In order to make sure the transaction is accurate, I still need to go and do these follow-up procedures for whichever transaction, but I will use CATS first to select my sample and then I will physically go and agree the details to further supporting documents. I can, however, use CATS here to recalculate and cast that source document, even if I'm simply just inputting the information into the system myself to do those calculations. Cutoff testing, once again, I'm selecting a sample from the accounting record, so I would say using CATS, select the sample. Guys, remember, you can't just leave it at that. I need to then go and make sure they're recorded in the correct period. So I will just update to say using CAT select the sample, but I must follow through with the rest of the procedure, even though it's manual, because that's how I'm going to test the risk itself. Classification, I will use CAT to select the sample, but then I will physically carry on with checking that it is recorded in the correct account. Presentation and disclosure, I must do that because it's inspecting the financials, it's not a CATS function. Let's look at our account balance assertions. For completeness of a physical asset, we select a sample from the physical item and we trace it to the subledger. I cannot use CATS for that because it's a physical item outside of the system that I'm selecting my sample from. However, I can use CATS. To compare the list of balances in the prior year to the current year to identify missing. That is something CATS can do itself. I can also use CATS to select my sample of payments from the bank statements because it's likely they've got the bank statement in a soft copy form. Okay, I will then trace it to the invoice and make sure it was raised, but my procedure will include CATS because I will select the sample initially. For existence, I'm selecting samples from the fixed asset register and then I'm tracing it to the physical asset so I can 
add using cats select my sample and then I will do the rest. I can also use cats to develop my external confirmations which I will then go and send to the third party and once again for selecting my sample for subsequent receipts from the bank statements. For valuation I can use cats to do a reconciliation I can compare the balance in the GL to the subledger. I must still follow up on reconciling items even though I won't use cats for that. Physical quantity counting. I can't use cats to do the physical count but to agree the subledger to the count sheets provided the count sheets are in soft copy. I can use cats to do that. And tracing it to the invoice, I will physically do so. I can't use cats. For my negative asset, guys, go and have a look at your ISA 540 procedures. But obtaining an understanding of the counting policy, I've got to physically do. I can't use cats for that. But considering whether it's consistent, comparing the policy to last year, I can use cats. For reasonability, comparing it to the market, I can use cats because it's an analytical procedure. And then testing the calculation, I can use CATS because the information is in the system. Getting an expert, I can't use CATS. It's a physical function I will need to do to ask the expert. Inspecting source documents for the name of the entity, I can't use CATS. And I also can't use CATS to inspect to see that there was any cession of their rights. So guys, there is no rights testing that I can do using CATS unless I'm selecting a sample to test for rights, in which case I'll use CATS to select the sample. And once again, nothing for presentation and disclosure because I will physically do that myself. Okay, that's all you have to do to incorporate CATS in these procedures, but there are additional procedures we've already looked at where we can go and scan we will use CATS. Where we want to go and look for reports of outstanding or of transactions done by a specific person, I can use CATS. So let's attempt a question, guys. This question is going to be out of six marks. So I'm going to give you two minutes reading time. And nine minutes writing time. 